Welcome. Oh my God. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about the C64C KiCad replica project. So we're going to see the progress of it. And we're also going to look about the audio setup. And also I'm going to show you some tips about fillets and um, time-lapse drawings. That's about it. So let's get to it. Let's have a look at the progress. Let's see. Kaikad Nightly. If you are not following this series, I'm using Kaikad Nightly. The top layer is the red. As you can see, it's pretty much done. And then uh, the bottom layer is green and we have come a long way. So you can see I might need some more masks around here. So we can see we have a slant line over there. Oops, we have something weird going on here. What the heck is that? Uh, and we didn't see that. But you can see it's mostly done on the top side here. And then let's look at the other side. <clears throat> we have most of the stuff done on the right side of the inner chair. We need some, uh, yeah, some uh, holes in the mask. So. Yeah, so that will be this video. So let's have a look at something else first. Now you can hear me talking with the Zoom 1N recorder and the lav mic. And here we have an audio test because I have a Canon G7X now, which I have some time to play with. And uh, it has a microphone input on the side. So would like to hear if the amplifier on that microphone is good. Or not. So let's have a listen. Testing one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. All right, if you ask me, the Zoom 1N was much more silent and I, th I think the sound was a bit better as well. <laughs> it could be this uh, microphone combination with the camera that doesn't work so well. So, But now that you're listening to this one, uh, you're also listening to a recording that has been uh, post-processed with uh, noise cancelling and uh, also equalization to enhance the treble and lower the bass because uh, I have the microphone on my chest and I can feel uh, my voice is booming a little bit in the chest so it's a bit bassy, uh, bassy bass. Anyway enough about the audio setup so let's have a look at the modulator that I was drawing. You can see it on the back side here. Yeah, we have the modulator here. Let's have a look in the schematic. I like to say schematic. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe because it's closer to Norwegian. Schema, schema. Uh, anyway, this is the symbol for the modulator. And we have both case and audio ground. And I was wondering You can see both of them are grounded. And I was wondering how that was going to work. Uh, two pins that I had the same ground. Well, in the layout, it's not the same. So what I've done is that I've given one pin the name case and the other one the name A, G and D. So they are separate pins. And if we now click this one and go to layout, we go straight to the modulator. You can see we have a case ground around here and then we have the A, G and D down there. So this makes it, uh, what should I say? Um, I think it's to do with the 
noise reduction actually is if it works it works maybe it doesn't work anyway <laughs> that's what i've done so we can also see that the holes are oval on rectangular shapes so yeah so that's the modulator and uh, i might do the same for the uh, as you can see here the shielding that goes around this cartridge port i've only used um, edge cuts actually yep so that's all i want to say about that and uh, maybe i should say something about zones and holes uh, there was a, also a comment in the previous video about that the main reason i'm not doing fills like all over the place here like i am doing a replica so i don't mind doing that but he had seen that i've done like a million clicks around the corner like here <laughs> yeah and that's a bit boring so i I've stunned, stopped doing that because it takes a lot of time. Uh, what I do instead, here you can see one of them. I draw just across these guys, which is not ground. And then I let the fill layer do the rest. So when I press B now, it will fill. And because of the clearance, uh, it will avoid them automatically. So. So yeah, so I have a little bit of a middle ground there. Here you can see the clearance. You can adjust it if you like. Let's say you say yes, eight. You see what happens. Press B. You can see a lot of more. Oh, now it wants to clear that one as well. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh. Control set is probably the easiest here now. <laughs> we got a message from Twitter. Twitter. Another message on Twitter we got from Pork Shop Express. It was uh, about curved traces. Are you drawing curved traces? Maybe I'm drawing curved traces. Have you thought about that lately? About drawing curved traces? No, it's actually not saying that. He says, uh, curved traces is a nightmare to work with once routed. I agree. You can't drag them never again so he's a right about that actually i'm not using curved traces i'm using fillets so fillets is a um, well you get curved traces when you use fillets you can mark two traces around an edge and then you press like one millimeter radius and it will draw a fillet in there so this is the fillet now if you try to uh, drag it it will cause a lot of problems anyway let me show you we go on the bottom layer and then we'll turn off the top layer like this. Uh, so in the example before the video cut, <laughs> before I made so much mistake, I had to do the whole thing <laughs> over again. I started drawing these three lines and then I perfected them, perfected them. Like I turn off the background like this. So my computer is a bit faster as you can see. And then I start straightening them and stuff. And then when I'm happy with it, I will uh, do the fillets. Now you can see something's weird going on here anyway. So let me show you that. I'll just draw a line to demonstrate. So let's now imagine that I have drawn all these four lines. So what I do is I turn off the background and I look, okay, they don't look even. So I will go in here and try to straighten and make them look even. Up here and down here. So I can do something about this as well if I like, like this. And uh, this one looks a bit high. So, and something weird is going on here, like this, that looks good. Uh, this one is also slanted, so now it looks, I think it looks great. Then I will double check with the image and see if we are, we are not working. <clears throat> if this is going to work so we see there's a lot of traces now it's going to be a bit tight over here so 
uh, we can fix that later. But if I make fillets now, it's impossible to drag them, as it said. So what you normally do, uh, you, you have 45 degree angles and then you have something called shove. So let me show you that. And that, this is something I don't use because it would cause 45 degrees. That doesn't work. So let's. So what you do, you go into route, interactive router settings, and you go. Uh, I have highlighted collisions. So that means when I, something is, I can show you that actually. So if I draw this one, it will highlight everything that collisions or collide. And if I try to click on them, it should uh, uh, prevent me from doing that, and it does also. So if I double click, so I try to place it there, it will just cancel. Uh, that will be a problem if you have something like this one, which is too close to these guys. It will start to like collide like that. So if that's a problem, you have to stop and you have to reduce the size of this one. And it's it's a bit hard. So. So what you normally do in KiCad, and I'm not doing it because of this project. So what you do is that you go to routers and interactive router settings and then set it to shove instead of highlight collection. Now in shove, you can move stuff around while you're drawing and it does that automatically. So if you do something like this, note that you have 45 degrees now. I can't do this with, uh, it won't work for this project. So, so, but normally this is, would be perfect if you could work like this because it's much, much faster. So let's say you go up here and you want to push these guys in. Oh yeah. You just move them. Like <laughs> they find, find a way by themselves. Look, you can shove Vias as well. <laughs> That's pretty cool, isn't it? So this is a good feature. However, it doesn't work for me in this project. So I will turn it off again. And now I have free routing. So that's what I'm going to work. So yeah, so let me show you a fillet. So after you have drawn a line, you can draw fillets. We can take something that is a bit more bent than all the other ones. It's easier to see what I actually am doing. So let's make a line here. So you keep it straight until you get uh, where it's supposed to go in again. If you know what I mean. You see the line is continuing anyway, even if you're going straight. You have to fi find some middle ground where it goes. So <clears throat> goes in again. So you can press G to uh, perfect that. Say the bend is going to be there. Okay. So now you add the fillet, so you click there and then there, holding shift, press, um, you can press U to also select that one. You can do that. It's not what I want to do right now. Anyway, so let's make a large radius, six millimeter. There you can see we have six millimeter. However, it happens up here as well. That doesn't work. Control set. Try it again. Fillet, tracks, there you go. So now only this one is, uh, is uh, 45 degrees. And then I can do it again. One. We see we have a short radius for this one. So <coughs> fortu fortunately, all of these are sharp bends, bends. So we don't need to do that actually. What I really like to do if I'm finished perfecting all of this, I like to just click the hold shift, press U. You can see what happens there. Then fillets, then one. Okay. Look, now it's already done it. So that's great. Now we can't move them. So we will have a problem here. Actually, this is has supposed to be closer to this one. So yeah, so I will not do fillets now. I will do it when I'm finished with all of these lines because this is this is actually a bit hard to draw around here. So <laughs> yeah, that was a bit long and uh, I hope you don't mind. So we'll just end the video with some time-lapse video and thank you very much 
for watching and see you another time. Bye bye. Mm.